So we have a very important week ahead with a lot of big tech earnings. And I am looking at Apple's chart right here and Apple does not report their earnings uh, this week. It is on May 5th, as you can see here. Uh, so that would be next week. But still, I wanted to go over this chart because I did look at this chart last video. And it's very interesting to see where we closed this last week, at least on the weekly candle. It is right on this gray line right here. If you remember, this gray line is the one that starts from the all time high level, or at least this pivot from up here and drags across to the next pivot that we made on this March 3rd. 31st high. And then you can see over here, it also acted as a resistance when we touched it on August 17th and around this area for a rejection. We are right on this level yet again. We had a hard rejection over here on April 3rd, but it was able to curl back up and then was able to get back above, but still the weekly closed right on this level, which is very key because again, we don't have earnings yet for Apple this week, but we still have a lot of other big tech earnings. Uh, for example, Microsoft is also this week. Microsoft earnings is on Tuesday, so I am going to be watching for this along with some other companies for this week. But again, going back to Apple, this week will have an effect on its price, especially if other companies don't perform as well as the consensus was, and we see a drop in their corresponding stock price, then that can also weigh on Apple as people try to predict how they will perform uh, when their earnings comes up next week. So again, we are on this key resistance. We closed right on it. Uh, it's kind of neutral, the fact that we closed right on it. But again, we do know that this has acted as a very high resistance numerous times in the past. And this is a part of a major channel that you can see it has the lower end all the way down here. So watch Apple throughout this week, especially on the weekly candle close. Because remember last week closed right on this key level. I was just kind of neutral in a sense. And this weekly candle can give us a lot of confirmation for potentially what earnings could bring uh, next week. So I'm gonna be watching for that. And I do wanna go over to Microsoft again here. I talked about Microsoft before and this potential distribution pattern. Now, of course, earnings can negate patterns like this, but as of now, Microsoft is looking fairly weak. We are still within this channel, even though a few times it's actually tried to break out of it. As you can see on the daily chart here, for example, this April 6th candle, a very bullish candle the upside, but it had no continuation after, and it maintained within this distribution pattern, at least this consolidation, to end up closing at least this last week within the channel still. Uh, so again, we will see what happens on Tuesday. It could totally negate this pattern of potential distribution, but again, watch earnings on Microsoft. As of now, it seems relatively weak. We'll see what happens after earnings, and then I can take a trade setup accordingly. Uh, but I am watching this, especially as it's shown weakness recently. And then also, of course, Microsoft will set the trend for other uh, big tech earnings that are out there for example, like Apple. Uh, so I will be watching this just as a general consensus of what could be happening in terms of overall tech performance in the last quarter. Uh, so I will be watching for that. Another thing that I am looking at for right now, as always, I'll do my update on dark pool levels. We had only 938 million at the 411.81 level uh, for Friday. So not that much overall. If you go back to Thursday over here, you can see we had 1.3 billion. So there's only two days throughout all of last week that had over 1 billion in premium. So again, not that much in terms of total dark pool premium. This is at the 414.27 level. And as you go back through each day, you'll see we didn't have that much on Wednesday, 314. This is the smallest that I've seen in a very long time. So just not a lot overall. Again, I have been watching for potential distribution in terms of dark pool premium. I'd like to see larger amounts of premium uh, to signify the potential for institutions to be offloading a lot of their shares. We haven't seen those super large prints yet. It's been relatively consistent, at least last week, or at least the uh, week prior to the one I'm showing you right now uh, was a decent amount. But again, we haven't seen that large, like 4 billion plus order uh, to signal a pretty substantial sell at these levels. So again, just looking back through each day, you can see based on Tuesday's print, we had 1 billion in premium overall for the 413.91. So again, still nothing too crazy. And then of course, Monday over here, you can see uh, we actually had 2.9 billion. So, so this was actually the largest of the week. And I guess we had three days that were over 1 billion to correct myself from earlier. Uh, but still, nevertheless, not that much in terms of overall premium. Monday would be the exception with 2.9 billion at the 412.55 level. So I'd like to see a breakdown of this level this week to confirm a potential bearish reversal to the downside. Uh, so do watch this 412.55 level uh, for this week. So of course, with big tech earnings this week, it is important for us to look at the NASDAQ or QQQ here. Uh, you can see just based on the current chart pattern, remember we have this ascending pattern uh, that starts all the way over here from this yellow trend line being the top resistance, as well as the one on the bottom being the 
the support level. And you can see from up here, so far we do have a double top pattern and potential distribution pattern right above this yellow trend line. And what's noticeable about last week is if you look here on the 15 minute chart, you can see we closed right below uh, this key yellow trend line for the ascending pattern, which is critical because we have yet to see a weekly close below this level. We've had daily closes, but then there was a quick reversal uh, the day following those daily closes. For example, over here, we had a big gap up the day after and then continued to the upside uh, to maintain in this chop pattern. But so far, we actually closed below from last week, a bearish emphasis for this week. Now, of course, with big tuck earnings, you can see anything happen because uh, a lot of things are going to be rebalanced by the end of the week. But still, uh, this is noticeable, especially after seeing all of this consolidation from up here and a potential double top pattern uh, for both this April 18th date as well as this April 3rd date. And another noticeable thing is looking at the QQQ flow from Friday. You can see here we had a 1.0 million, quite a bit out the money put order for this 290 strike, as well as a 7.0 million for the same strike of 290. These hit the tape about two or three minutes apart from each other, as you can see over here, uh, this one being the 519 expiration, so relatively close in terms of time, as well as the 915 one, so they added a lot more time on this. Uh, both of these, of course, since they are highlighted in yellow, are above the ask, as you can see here in order details. So these are definitely noticeable. We haven't been seeing prints like this in a while, at least for QQQ. Uh, so definitely watch both of these orders. They are, again, quite a bit out the money for QQQ. Uh, so we will see if these do play out this week. And it looks like at least these whales are liking the thesis of potential bearishness going into this week with earnings. So we'll see here if this does end up painting out for more downside. But as of now, uh, we are back within this ascending pattern as we were in previously for a while with a double top above us. So based on earnings, this week. We'll see if we have continuous downside from here. So make sure to monitor this. And also another thing with that, a little tip uh, to get a sense on sentiment for tech. You can see here on Bitcoin, we actually had a pretty substantial sell-off over the course of the past couple of days. You can see it started here on Wednesday of last week continued all the way to the downside. Typically, Bitcoin tends to be a good gauge for where riskier assets, and speculative assets are going to go. And of course, tech is comprised of a lot of those assets. Uh, so whenever we see a pretty substantial sell uh, in Bitcoin, tech tends to follow afterwards if it doesn't go at the same time. And so far, tech hasn't really sold off as substantially as Bitcoin has so far. So there's a potential for it to catch up uh, here this week with earnings. The same thing applies for uptrends. When we saw this major breakout over here, we also saw a breakout in tech. Uh, so these kind of go hand in hand with each other. It's not exact, uh, but whenever you see a large move, like a large sell here, uh, you tend to see tech also drift with it. So this is something that I've used in terms of just an overall indicator. It is good to see Bitcoin has rolled over so far, especially coming off of a distribution pattern. So it's likely to have continuous downside. We are within this range of previous consolidation, so it likely consolidates here as well. But as long as it stays under 29,000, it will likely have continuous downside to this yellow trend line over here, which of course would be bearish as well for or overall tech. So do watch for something like this to happen. So keep an eye on big tech earnings this week. It's kind of going to give us a trend for the next couple weeks here, especially after we had OPEX on Friday. So there is some potential for more volatile conditions as we head into the end of the month since a lot of those options expired. So we will see what happens this week with big tech and I will see you guys on Wednesday for another video.